basically of embedded systems. Um, the idea behind it is to have really independent and self-contained modules, language modules, and specific tooling for it, which are not bound to a specific methodology, but which can be freely employed in your environment and which can be integrated into custom tool chains. So all the different modules that we are building are intended to be usable on their own and independent of each other. Uh, the basic idea is that they are also open and extendable, so you can easily extend them, customize them. Um, there are two modules that I want to emphasize on today, which are the state chart tools, and the other one is DAMOS, which is a modeling tool for uh, block-oriented modeling for dynamic uh, systems, which actually uh, has become an Eclipse project already. They are currently undergoing the IP review process for the source code, so um, you will still find the code in the Yakindo repository up to now, but it will soon move to Eclipse as well. Uh, by the way, my colleague Andreas Unger, who is the project lead there, is going to talk about that tomorrow afternoon, so if you're interested in Damas, you may join there. Today I'm going to talk about the state chart tools, uh, which are tool set built on Eclipse, um, open source, that deals with editing state charts, with simulation of state charts, with, of course, validation of state charts, and with the generation of source code from state charts. Um, what we, yeah, what we regard as a state chart is similar to what David Tarell once defined as uh, his state machine formalism. It's just a little bit different in the sense that as we expect the tooling to be self-contained, we also expect the state chart formalism that we have to be self-contained. So our state charts are actually equipped with an interface. You can see that on the left here. Uh, it is um, specified textually by a textual specification language, and it is meant to define the interfaces the state chart shares with its environment. So that makes our state chart self-contained, in contrast to like, for instance, state charts, state machines in the UML, which depend on some underlying structural formalism. Here it's not the case. The second thing that makes it a little bit different is that we do not uh, incorporate an event-driven semantics by default but uh, Yakindo state charts have a cycle-based execution semantics. That fits quite well into the embedded domain where you often find uh, yeah, periodically uh, executed state chart models. So that was an inspiration for Yakindo as well. Um, this cycle-based execution semantics allows us to yeah, process concurrent events because we decouple the execution of the state chart from the occurrence of events at its interface. And we can easily uh, integrate an event-driven behavior by just defining something, uh, a driver that drives this execution of a state chart whenever an event occurs at its environment. So the approach is a bit more flexible than what you expect from a classical event-driven state chart. The time control is fully dedicated to the environment. Um, even if you see things like after five seconds here, that is uh, calculated down to cycles that you can specify within simulation or code generation. Uh, so you can you have full control over the uh, time semantics that it uses there. Yeah, as I said, we cover editing, simulation, validation, and code generation. And I just want to show you a quick overview over the basic Yakindu state chart tools we have editor built on GMF, which has integrated support for textual specification uh, for the interface of the state machine, uh, for actions or reactions within states, and for the reactions on transitions. And that is based on X text and it is completely integrated into the editor. So if you go into direct editing mode, uh, you have the full support that you expect from an Xtext editor there, like uh, syntax highlighting, like auto-completion, uh, validation, and so on. Uh, you also have integrated this Xtext editor in the properties page. You can see that uh, down here. So we have selected the interface specification in the diagram, and we can 
uh, use Xtext tooling to, to specify that formally. The editor itself is based on uh, GMF runtime. It's not generated, but it's directly programmed against uh, the GMF runtime. And this separation of textual and graphical aspects we have also incorporated in the underlying meter model. So our meter model is twofold. We have a um, S-graph meter model which defines the structural aspects of a state machine or a state chart that is defined plainly in EMF. And we have an expression language which is used for the interfaces, for the actions within states and for the transition. Uh, effects that is based on an X-text grammar, which we call S-text. We also have support for simulation of these state charts, and we can simulate them in two ways, either cycle-based or in an event-driven manner. So you can uh, choose that while uh, performing simulation, whether you want to have a cycle-based or an event-based um, simulation um, running. Yeah, and we have a simulation view which you can use then to interface into the state chart, so to raise events or to manipulate variables uh, and things like that. Of course, simulation states are properly highlighted as well as transitions. I'll show you that later on in the demo. Uh, the interesting thing about our simulation environment is that it doesn't directly simulate the state chart, but that it depends on an intermediate model, which we call as XSAC which is a sequentialized form of the state chart execution. So we calculate all possible execution traces throughout the state chart uh, into a derived model, and the simulation environment runs on that model. The idea behind is that uh, if you want to change the execution semantics, you do not have to adopt or customize our simulation engine, but you simply have to adopt the transformation from S-graph and S-text to this intermediate model. Yeah, so it is built for extensibility uh, with this respect. And of course, we also deliver code generators. We have built-in support for Java uh, and C code generators. We're also working on C++ uh, code generators. All these generators can be customized by so-called generator models, which are actually specified uh, in an X-Text language as well. Um, where you basically specify for which state chart you generate code and by means of so-called features you can parameterize the code generator. So you can here for instance specify the outlet where to generate the code. We also have features that you can specify how code gets inlined or, or anything else that the generator offers for, uh, for built-in parameterization so to say. Um, of course all generators um, are integrated into a, the Eclipse Builder infrastructure so you can easily execute them whenever you change your models and have the code regenerated. Uh, you can also integrate custom generators quite easily using either the Extend2 approach or Extend uh, as it is now called uh, and we also have backwards compatibility support for the old expand language which is still yeah, used in the industrial practice. Uh, interesting thing with the code generators again is that our built-in code generators actually not depend on the state chart formalism itself, but again on this execution model. So if you want to change the uh, execution semantics by manipulating the transformation from the state chart formalism to this execution model, you not, also, not only adopt the simulation environment, but you also adopt the code generation basis. So the code generation and the simulation are in sync with respect to the execution semantics there. Okay, I want to give you a short demo and see how that is working live. I just created an empty simple project and I will create a state chart, which we call demo for instance and it's created with a simple state and an initial state and let's simply call that state one and as I said our state charts are self encapsulated and specify an interface so here I want to specify uh, an interface we have support for a unnamed default interface but you can also have named interfaces to group events 
uh, and variables accordingly. Uh, within the interface, you can specify things like events, operation, variables, and so on. Let's simply create an incoming event here, which we simply call E1. And let's model a transition that is triggered um, to a new state. Let's call it S2, uh, which actually gets triggered by this uh, event. Here you see the XTEX tooling that uh, gets integrated into the direct editing here. Okay, let's assume we have a second uh, event that's also incoming. And let's assume we want to have a variable um, that is of type integer. And we can specify an initial value. And let's assume that um, yeah, from this state S2, we want to go back to S1 by means of a time transition. So we use an after trigger here. And let's assume we have an entry action within this state. Let's use this dialog here um, to specify that. So on entry in this state, we want to increase the uh, counter variable. And let's have a last transition, a self transition here. Uh, where we just want to reset this uh, counter variable in terms of we receive a uh, second uh, event. So if we receive event one, we want to reset the counter variable. Oh. Okay, so this is basically the editing functionality. And let's simulate that state shot. You get an impression on what can be done uh, from there as well. We can simply run it as a Yakindo state chart simulation. And then if the screen is large enough, you get such a simulation view. Yes, I can fold in the palette and give you a better look on that. And then you can raise the events. And uh, yeah, we have now a cycle-based execution with a specified cycle time. Um, and you see you can inspect the variables. You could also change the value of the variable in place. Um, and of course, we re can reset the value as well. This uh, simulation environment has the possibility to change the execution semantics in an event-based manner. And if you have a cycle-based execution, which is the default, you can change the cycle period as well. So you can adopt that to your environment. We also have built-in support for code generators, so we can uh, create a new generator model and we can specify that we want to do that for this state chart and we can specify which of the built-in key uh, Yakindo code generators we want to use. And uh, what gets done then is that we get such an, a generator model uh, which basically has support for uh, different features. Uh, here we specify the outlet, and you see the code got directly generated into the source gen folder, which is not created as a source folder. That's the reason why we can't browse the code yet, but I, um, I don't think we'll have to do that. You can play with that if you want to yourself. So that's basically what uh, Yakindu offers. Uh, as you can download it and, and as you can execute it um, as an end user tool. Uh, what I want to stress once again is that um, our tools are based on these different meter models. So the, the twofold specification of a state machine that is based on the graphical and a textual model. And this intermediate execution model as well as the generator model to drive the code generators. And when building the state chart tools, we did that to are uh, allowed to easily build customized state-based tools. So we built in means for extensibility. So we can, for instance, easily restrict the structural concepts the state, sh uh, state chart offers by um, dealing with the S-graph model. Or you can customize this textual specification language that is used in the interfaces and the transitions in the states 
by just customizing that S text language. You can also adopt the execution semantics by customizing the transformation from the state chart into this intermediate model, and then you directly have adopted the simulation engine and the code generators. You can, of course, also adopt the built-in code generators. You can extend them with custom ones. We have uh, decoupled the type system. You can also adopt uh, the type system that we use to type um, event data and variables uh, to your custom type system. Of course, you then have to deal with the certain aspects of simulation and code generation that are related to the type system as well. And of course, you have the possibility to define additional validation constraints. So Yakindu was actually built for extensibility right from the beginning. And now let's come to what I uh, mean with domain-specific state charts because that's what the talk actually is about today. Um, we, uh, when going into the industry, really uh, noticed that state-based modeling is useful in a lot of domains. Um, but in each of the domain, um, the state chart is usually a bit different, and it, the expression language or the, the things that are modeled on transitions and the events that are referred to are actually often, um, uh, yeah, you, you really want to address your domain concepts there, but the formalisms that you normally get uh, if you buy a state-based state modeling tool are typically independent of any domain. So. Our question was how can we bridge that gap and how can we adopt the state charts to really deal with domain concepts and how it, can we build a tool or a, a framework uh, that helps us to easily build up state, uh, state chart based tools that uh, deal with these domain concepts. Uh, i give you an example on the domain of uh, human machine interface modeling for instance deals with concepts like scenes or certain widget types like buttons or sliders or labels. And these widgets have certain yeah, features that are intrinsic to them. For instance, a scene can be started or stopped, a button can be pressed, a slider can have different values and so on. And what we really want to do is we want to enhance our state charts so we can directly uh, deal with these domain-specific concepts. So we can adopt the state machine to um, refer to domain-specific context within the declaration of events or within the action code that we use as uh, effects on transitions. For instance, we want to call certain features. We want to express that we want to start the scene when taking a transition in a state chart. Um, so we want to really integrate the concepts of a particular domain, the HMI domain, uh, in this example here. Um, and what we can actually do with Yakindu is that we can exchange this or customize this textual specification language as text uh, to really refer to domain-specific contexts. Here I have a screenshot of a customized Yakindu state chart uh, where we have incorporated these changes. So here within the action code, for instance, of this entry action in the AC state, we refer to the features that these built-in widget types actually have. So that are, is direct access to domain-specific concepts there. Uh, we also incorporated that uh, into an, uh, a demo, and I will shortly show that to you, uh, just very plainly. Um, the domain-specific context, so the different types that are there, the different widget types are defined in a dedicated language that we have built with Xtext. And we have the so-called ActionMy contract language, which we use to define the configuration of a particular HMI, so of a head unit in this case. So we say we have four animations there, we have a fan control in this AC scene, we have three sliders, a label, and a couple of buttons. And then within the state chart, we can really refer to these concepts. So we described that we want to um, model a state chart for a particular head unit. Uh, we refer to this application here in the interface. And then within the action code, we can uh, directly access the scenes and the buttons on um, uh, the widget types that we have. And we have also built in 
our support for simulating that. And we have linked that to a external uh, modeling tool, which is commercial, but which I can show you just for demonstration purposes, where such an HMI is actually modeled. And you can see that in the details because this resolution, resolution here is quite low, but you can see that in the overview in the top right. If I change between different scenes here, for instance, if I go to the AC scene, then the state machine is directly coupled to that and we can directly simulate that as well here. So if I use the slider here or press the buttons in the left, then you see some state transitions within the state machine. If you have a screen that is large enough, you can easily see that. So just to give you an impression where we customized the tooling and the effort to do so was not so very large here. So how is it done? Um, if we look below the roof, then as I said, our state chart formalism is based on two concepts. We have this structural meter model as graph, which defines the structural concepts, uh, which are basically the same for every state chart formalism. So that defines that you have states, transitions, and so on. And then we have this X text language, which defines all the declarations for events, for variables, for function that are used in the interface of the state chart. And we have the expression language that is used for the reaction behavior of the state chart within the entry and exit action of the states and on the effects of the transitions. And what we can now do is we can uh, exchange uh, or even replace this X text language with a customized language that refers to concepts that are defined in an external meter model. In our example, it referred to an HMI contract which defines uh, such a HMI configuration. And we adopted the expression language then to deal with these concepts. And that, of course, can be transferred to different domains uh, and to different concepts. And uh, you can easily uh, use that and, and build up customized tooling and reuse all the other stuff that is there. So the graphical editor that would be hard to build, the simulation engine, the code generators. Um, the only thing that you, of course, have to do is you have to adjust the parts that are affected by your change to S-text. So basically, the transformation to the uh, intermediate execution model and the type system and so on. And that makes uh, the state chart then domain-specific and the tooling, of course, as well. And that's basically it. Um, the Yakindu tools um, are currently hosted at Eclipse Labs. Uh, we are planning to have a release candidate uh, within the next weeks, and uh, we want to release by this year and then start with an Eclipse proposal also for the Yakindo State Chart tool, so we want to bring it to Eclipse. If you want to try it out now, you can uh, download it from uh, the Eclipse lab site, or you can directly go to the uh, Yakindo org project site, which then points you to the Eclipse Lab site where you can find um, an update site. Actually, the link I've given here is an old one. There's also a UNO update site, of course, available um, by now. And but you can find that. Oh, excuse me. You can find that on the on the update site. Yeah. So that's it from my side. Uh, and I'm. I thank you for um, for attention. And uh, I'm open to questions. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, then I might encourage to try it out, and uh, I wish you a nice coffee break. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs>